In this tutorial, I'm going to go over information contained in Section 8 of the Pilot's Operating Handbook for the Cessna 172S aircraft. Here we'll find information on airplane handling, service, and maintenance. As always, we start off with the table of contents. Here we have the introduction which basically says that this section contains factory recommended procedures for proper ground handling and routine care and service of your airplane. It also identifies certain inspection and maintenance requirements which must be followed if your airplane is to retain that new airplane's performance and dependability. It is important to follow a planned schedule of lubrication and preventative maintenance based on climatic and flying conditions encountered in your local area. Here it continues on to basically say that you can go to a Cessna service station and they'll know about the requirements of maintenance for your airplane and can contact you when you need to do uh, scheduled maintenance and lubrication and oil changes and whatnot. Um, it then also goes on to say that, quite importantly, Cessna does not condone modifications, whether by supplemental type certificate or otherwise, unless these certificates are held and or approved by Cessna. Other modifications may void warranties on the airplane, since Cessna has no way of knowing the full effects of the, on the overall uh, airplane. Operation of an airplane that has been modified may risk be a risk to the occupants and operating procedures and performance data set forth in the pilot's operating handbook, this handbook, may no longer be considered accurate for the modified airplane. So if you buy the airplane brand new and it's under warranty and you want to make some modifications to it and they're done by a third party, well you might just void that warranty, so you got to be very careful about that. Here we can see information uh, in terms of the identification plate, and so there will be two of them. One of them is going to be on the left aft tail cone, and that will tell you the serial number, the model number, and the production certificate number of the airplane. And then in the left forward door post, there's going to be another plate which will tell you the finish and trim plate, and it tells you basically the colors that the airplane were painted from the factory. Here we see that there's information on Cessna owner advisories, and that's broken down to U.S. owners and international owners, because the regulations will change depending on which country you're in. Here we can see publications, and these items will be provided to you from the factory when you buy the airplane new. We've got the Customer Care Program Handbook, the Pilot's Operating Handbook, the Pilot's Checklist, the Passenger Briefing Card, and the Cessna Service Station Directory. Here we see important information that must be on the airplane at all times. It must be displayed in the airplane at all times. So we have the Aircraft Airworthiness Certificate, the aircraft registration certificate and the aircraft radio station license. In addition to these items we must have on board the aircraft but not necessarily we don't have to display it are the pilot's operating handbook that's usually in the back seat, the Garmin G1000 cockpit reference guide, the weight and balance and associated papers and the equipment list. Most of this is found in the pilot's operating handbook. We've got to be made available upon request is the airplane and engine logbooks. This basically tells you when all the scheduled maintenance has been done, oil changes, any type of accident or incident, etc., etc. Here we can see FAA required inspections, and it tells us that there's two. There's an annual inspection you must do every year, and if the airplane is used for hire, and for hire means if you rent your airplane to people either to learn how to use or you've got a buddy who's a pilot and he says you know hey I want to take your airplane out on the weekend and I'll give you a hundred dollars an hour if you uh, let me borrow your airplane if if you do that your airplane is now considered commercially for hire and you have to do hundred hour inspections in addition to the annual inspection so that's a very important point that you have to keep in mind 
here we see pilot uh, conducted preventative maintenance. We can see alterations or repairs. And it says basically to contact the FAA prior to any alterations on the airplane to ensure that the airworthiness of the airplane is not violated. That's very, very important. Um, here we have ground handling, in particular towing the airplane. If you're going to tow it by hand, use the tow bar, which is found in the baggage compartment. And if you're going to tow it using a vehicle, never turn the nose wheel more than 30 degrees with the uh, tow bar attached to, the, to a vehicle because you can cause damage to the front nose landing gear. And if you have a rudder lock, make sure you remove that before you tow the airplane because that can do damage to the rigging. And it finally says that if you're going to tow it over a rough surface going into a hangar, that will make the airplane uh, move up and down. Or if you have a flat tire and the nose wheel will make the tail move up. So tow the airplane very slowly into the hangar because you don't want it to start bumping up and down on the rough surface. And what will happen is if you normally put an airplane in the hangar, it goes in tail first the tail will hit the top roof of the hangar and cause damage to the airplane. Here we have information on uh, parking. It says head into the wind, set the parking brake, and if it's cold weather, don't leave the parking brake on because moisture between the brake pad and the disc can cause the uh, brakes to freeze onto the, to the rotor discs. And so what you should do instead is leave the parking brake off, but use the wheel chocks. And then, of course, you want to tie down the airplane using ropes that have a tensile strength of around 700 pounds. And you want to use the control wheel lock and, of course, the uh, rudder lock if you happen to have one. And then you're going to put a pitot tube covering. Here we have information on jacking, which is basically how to raise or lower the airplane to do things like change tires. And it's very, very cool if you haven't seen it. They actually jack up airplanes as large as Cessna, as a Boeing 747s. And I'm going to have a video uh, linked over here so you can see a really big airplane that's been jacked up for uh, landing gear re uh, repair work. It's very impressive. Here we can see flyable storage. We've got servicing the airplane, oil specifications, capacity of the engine sump, 9 quarts total, 8 is going to be in the oil sump, and then you don't want to have less than 5 quarts at any point in time. We have information on the oil and oil filter uh, change, improved fuels and fuel capacity. We've gone over this in previous sections. This is just a reiteration. Fuel additives and mixing ratio charts for those additives. Here we have fuel contamination, and essentially what it's saying is that you could have things by way of water, rust, sand, dirt, microbes, bacterial growth, and so if you are going to do a flight, you have to drain all the fuel drainage ports and sumps, and those are found along the wing, and then there's also a strainer on the bottom of the nose, which is the final fuel draining point before in fuel gets to the engine. That's your uh, closest point to the engine where you can drain. You want to check all of those, make sure it doesn't have any contaminants. If it does, you're going to keep draining it until you get all that stuff out. And you're going to rock the wings and nose of the airplane so that all the contaminants settle to the bottom and go back and recheck all those drain ports. You're also going to check the color of the fuel to make sure that it's the right kind of fuel. Um, and if after several times draining each of the sumps, you still find contaminants, or if you find the wrong kind of fuel has been put in the airplane, you have to take it to the maintenance shop, have them completely drain everything out, flush the system, and then put in the proper clean uh, grade of fuel in the airplane. That's very, very important. And if you're flying to an airport that you're not sure of, in the sense that you've never been there before, it's a small airport, maybe it looks a little bit sketchy, you have to make sure that you check the fuel provided by that fixed base operator um, 
in, in ensure that it's clean and it's the the right grade of fuel uh, before you set out on your flight. Don't just trust the person selling the fuel that it is what they say it is, or that it's uh, has no contaminants. For example, here we see information on the landing gear. In particular, the most important thing is we see the tire pressures, 45 PSI on the nose wheel and 42 PSI for each of the main wheels. Here we see the windshield and windows. The important thing to remember here is that this is not a car. The windshield is plastic and because it's plastic it can craze so you never never want to clean the windshield with gasoline, benzene, alcohol, acetone, a fire extinguisher, anti-ice fluid, lacquer or thinner. These all kind of seem like common sense things that you know you should, probably shouldn't be using a fire extinguisher to clean anything. But the one that can get you in trouble is glass cleaner because that's something you could very very easily I could very easily foresee anybody at making that honest mistake. So you you want to use an approved uh cleaner like uh Stoddard solvent and you want to use a mild washing detergent with plenty of water afterwards. Um, you don't want to rub the plastic windshield with a dry cloth. That's going to build up static and that's going to attract a lot of dust and dirt to the windshield. And after you clean it, you can apply a light coat of wax on there to fill in any little nicks or scratches and get a nice uh, overall clean finish on the windshield. Here we can see additional care for the painted surfaces. Again, you're going to want to wash the airplane with, you know, soap and water. Um, you're going to want to make sure you give it a nice light wax and make sure that you don't get any wax to cover up things like the static ports. Here we see propeller care and engine care interior care, avionics care. It's important because if your airplane has a G1000 that's got a special anti-reflective coating on it and so it's very sensitive to skin oils, waxes, ammonia, and abrasive cleaners. You really want to consult the Garmin uh, cockpit reference guide to see what you can use to clean it before you do anything. And that's it for section 8. Then we get to section 9 which is supplements. So it's very simple it's got a lot of good information that you should know to help you uh, preserve your aircraft in a very good condition for a long time and if anything you should take pride in the fact that it's your airplane or even if you're renting it because if you're going to rent it other people are going to use it and so it's very important that they have a safe airplane because you would want to have a safe airplane when you rent it from the last person and if you own it you know it should be your baby you should be proud of it and you want to take good care of it and when it comes time to upgrade to a different airplane or you decide to sell it it'll retain its value because it will show that you cared so that's all there is to it it's really that simple and uh... hope you enjoyed it